So next, let me take you through the browser on the left. Now in the browser is essentially where you're going to find all of your sounds, all of your instruments that you're going to be using in Ableton. Now, what this means is that through the browser, you can load up any kind of sound that you have access to. Now, you can buy third party sounds that give you access to things like very, very nice, real piano sounds or drum sounds or any kind of instrument that you could think of. There are also these things called synthesizers and synthesizers allow you to generate sound from nothing from essentially just some piece of code that has been edited and synthesizers are generally what's used for all of the electronic non-organic sounds that you hear in electronic music essentially or in music in general whilst that's not always the case it is most of the time now you can also find what's known as samples. So samples are individual audio files that have been created and exported and placed into Ableton for you to access. So if I click on any one of these, as long as the little blue headphone icon is, well, turned blue essentially, this allows you to audition or hear any of the sound that you've highlighted and using the arrow keys, keys up, down arrow keys, I can scroll through them quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting together a little basic drum loop using audio samples, which are drums. Now, in the samples folder here, Ableton is giving me access to every single audio sample that is installed with the program. Now this includes not only drum samples, but a lot of other live sounding instruments. Well, by that I mean synthesizers, basses, pianos, anything you can think of. Now we want to just pick specific drums. So Ableton has made this really easy for us. We're going to go into the drum category. We're going to open up the drum hits section. And over here, if I open up any one of these, I can see the samples of that type. So if I open up kick, all of these are kick drum samples. So what we're going to do is delete what we had here. I'm going to click just where this is called the ruler. What we're going to do is just click above the numbers where the magnifying glass is. Click, hold it down and drag the mouse down to zoom in. Now, these are known as beats and bars. Again, don't worry too much about the details of this. We're going to cover it more later. But essentially, from one to two, it's one bar. From two to three, it's one bar. Three to four, it's one bar. And each bar is divided by four beats. So this is beat one of bar one, beat two of bar one, beat three of bar one, beat four of bar one, and then bar number two, B1. Okay? So, actually, what, one extra little thing. If you look here at the transport controls, you can see this says essentially bar one, B1, division one, bar one, B2, division one, bar one, B3, bar one, B4, and then when we go to two, bar two, B1. Okay. Now we're going to start by trying to make a very basic house music drum pattern. This is known as the four to the floor drum pattern. You may have heard of that phrase before, but if not, no worries. What we're going to do is just select a kick drum. That sounds pretty nice and beefy. I'm going to drag it over to Ableton on a new track, not an existing one but a new one right here and it creates a track for us and then what I'm going to do is click with the hand icon I'm going to hold alt or option in the newer max on the keyboard I'm going to hold that down click and drag over to 1.2 which is beat 2 of bar 1 I'm going to do the same thing again for beat 3 again for beat four. So this pattern is known as four to the floor because you've got a kick drum on every one of the four beats in a bar. 
then what I can do is highlight a section like this and then again by going to where the hand icon is on the top part of the actual audio sample hold option or alt on the keyboard click and drag a quicker way to do this is highlight the section again like this two bars worth of kick drums press command D on a Mac or control D on a Windows laptop now if I play this back, this is what it sounds like. I'm going to turn off the metronome. There you go. Okay. Now one thing I did just very quickly was I set a loop to occur over these four bars. The way I did that is I highlighted the section I wanted to loop and I pressed Command L on my Mac. You can also press Control L on a Windows laptop. And another way you could do it is you have, this is your loop section essentially. You can adjust the in and out points of a loop. You can also drag the loop over to wherever you want. Now it will only be active if this icon is highlighted in yellow. This means that the loop is on. If it's not on, then the loop is deactivated. This is what the loop does. I'm just going to click play and you'll watch the playback. Just keep looping back to the beginning and when it gets to the end, looping back to the beginning again. Have a listen. And there you go. You saw how when it got to the end of bar four, it looped back to bar one.